Well, hello, God bless you, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here, and I pray that you're having a, a wonderful day. I pray that you're enjoying the blessings of the Lord, and I pray, my friends, that you are praying for our nation, uh, for the world, uh, for the conflict in Ukraine, for all of the things that are going on that are taking place that concerns all of us. Now, today's uh, uh, invitation to service tonight, I almost said on today's broadcast, but on this invitation to, for, to uh, ask you to join me for Bible study, I also want to take advantage of this time and make another request of you. You, the audience who tunes in and who, who, who uh, join us on a regular basis, I want to say, first of all, thank God for you. Thank God for your prayers. Now, I know that you all are prayer warriors. I know that you know how to pray because you have prayed for me. You have prayed for me throughout this entire uh, a pandemic or should I say plandemic, and God has answered your prayers. I don't talk much about my vaccination status one way or the other because it's not about me. And I did not want my personal choices to influence anyone. I, I was one of those pastors who treated the people of, uh, of, the, of the church that I am privileged to, to shepherd and uh, those who are, that I have influence with as adults, as grown people. So I did join uh, that crowd of preachers who were on the internet or on television, uh, rolling up their sleeve and telling you to take the shot. Um, they're not virologists. They don't, I don't think that they uh, knew or even now know enough to uh, encourage you to do something like that one way or the other. I think that they should have, as I did, leave that up to each individual. And uh, I, did, I haven't talked about my status, but I, I want to say this, and this is, I'm saying this because I believe in your prayers. You've been praying for me and God has taken good care of me. Your prayers have joined with mine. This past Sunday, we celebrated 93 weeks of being in the uh, live services, uh, preaching the word of the Lord. On average, I preach two, two services every Sunday. I preach and teach the word of the Lord every Thursday night. And we've been going for it in the name of Jesus for seven weeks. As you know, we had to broadcast from the church only because our governor had put the church on the non-essential list. Oh, wouldn't. When you going to let it go? Never placed us on the non-essential list. Who would put a, the church of all places on the non-essential list? But he was overturned and we uh, entered into the sanctuary. The, he was overturned on a Saturday. We were back in church that following Sunday, the very next day, and we've been churching ever since. And you have prayed for me and God has answered your prayers. He's been good to me and I thank the Lord. No, my friends, I have not received any uh, uh, shots or any boosters or anything like that. And I sit before you today alive and well, uh, very healthy and blessed of the Lord. I have, uh, I have practiced good practices. I've practiced uh, social distancing. I've practiced wearing the, the, the mask. I've done things that, 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 that wise people would do, but I felt that uh, that uh, I didn't hear enough. Not enough was presented to me for me to put uh, technology in my body that had been rushed to market. Uh, on a normal basis, it takes between 10 and 20 years to come up with a vaccine. This one was delivered in nine months. And it didn't matter to me who was in the White House. I was talking about my house here, my body. And uh, I need to be convinced. And I haven't been. And God have taken care of me. But he's kept me, uh, by and large, due to the prayers of the saints and the will of God. I'm one of those people who who believe that when God gets ready to call me home, I don't I don't need any. He doesn't need a vac. He doesn't need a virus. He doesn't need anything. All he's got to do is just just call my name. And the, in the Bible, he didn't even call the man's name. He just called him a fool. Said, "Thy fool, this this night, thy soul shall be required of thee." And the man died. So. The Lord is watching over us. The Lord is keeping us. But I need your prayers. I need your prayers. I need you to help me continue to pray about the war conflict. There, there's conflict going on. Um, 
thousands, millions have been displaced. Tens of thousands have been killed. And this particular conflict that I'm talking about, uh, as, as, as bad as, as, as what we see taking place in Ukraine. And my heart, like yours, is, is broken uh, when we see little children uh, uh, killed, when we see pregnant mothers um, uh, almost literally giving birth and bombs going off uh, at the hospitals. And we see the, the loss of life and we're hearing about the mass graves and we're hearing and seeing the things that are happening to Ukraine as Putin is on his move. Uh, uh, there is the politics of it. There is the backstory. But what I'm talking about, I don't want to go into all that. I'm just talking about how people who two weeks ago, two or three weeks ago, were living just like you and me and their whole world has been shattered. Uh, the fallout from this uh, will 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 last for quite some time. The economical fallout will last for quite some time. And we see here in America how our gas prices actually be fair went up the day that President Biden took office and canceled the Keystone pipeline. It went up 70 some odd percent before Putin made his move. Uh, and now look at what is taking place. And uh, my friends, it may get worse before it gets better. But I need you to pray because you are prayer warriors. I have great confidence in your prayers because you've been praying for me. And I, when I said earlier that I need your help, I'm not asking for a financial assistance. I'm asking for prayer because we need, I believe that if you pray, if you pray and if I pray and we, we include this prayer uh, into the prayers that we're already praying, that God will hear us. Uh, we're praying for the people of Ukraine. But my friends, since uh, uh, November of 2020, there have been a civil war taking place in the Horn of Africa. There have been a civil war taking place in Ethiopia. The PL, uh, the PTLF, the People Liberation Front, are battling against the government of Ethiopia. And my friends, tens of thousands have been killed. Women have been raped. People have been chopped up uh, by machetes. People have been displaced. Millions of refugees. Pain is, is taking place. And there's war in Yemen. There is war in Ethiopia, along with the war in Ukraine. For some reason, the U.S. Uh, news media, they're not interested in the death totals uh, of, of, the uh, of the Ethiopians. Uh, it's been going on since 2020, and it doesn't make the news here. Nobody really talks about it. I know while I'm talking to you, some of you are going online looking it up. Thank you. Thank you for that. God said in the Bible, in Ephesians, Ezekiel, excuse me, chapter 18 and verse 4, the first clause, God says, Behold, all souls are mine. He made the whole human race. And I believe that the deaths of Ethiopians and uh, the Yemenis and the pe people of Yemen, uh, the, 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 the conflict that has taken place on the Horn of Africa, I believe it pricks the heart of God just as much as the conflicts that are taking place in Ukraine. I believe that it causes the heart of God to believe. Uh, and that God's care and that the Lord, the God of the Bible, I mean, his care uh, is equal for all people. I believe with all my heart that Christ died for everyone. And um, uh, all I know to do at this point in time is to pray 
Now, I'm not one of those who minimize the effect of prayer. Uh, we, we see some silly people on television who minimize prayer. We've got to stop praying and do something. Well, let me tell you something. I'm, I'm not against doing something. But you don't want to juxtapose, juxtapose, juxtapose one against the other. Nothing happens until and unless we pray. And I'm asking you, the people who follow this ministry, the people who take the time to hear me, and I certainly do appreciate you for that. I thank you for the kind comments. I thank you for the prayer. I thank you for your financial support. You guys are fantastic. Thank you. Thank you for how you have partnered with Brother Wooden during this time. And I pray that our, our partnership lasts. But I, I know that you can get a prayer through to God because I feel your prayers. My concern is that you, like me, have not heard of the conflict in Ethiopia. You haven't heard about uh, what's been going on since 2020. You haven't heard about the tens of thousands of Ethiopians who are being killed. You haven't heard about the civil war in Ethiopia. And we, we don't make light of it because it's a civil war, because if you study back and you go back far enough, you see that the Ukrainians and the Russians are kin. They come from the same place. They're uh, related. It kind of reminds me, Brother Gary, when Israel and, and, and Judah was fighting each other go back far enough, they were the same people. Listen, in your prayers for me, in your prayers for the Upper Room Church of God in Christ and this ministry, in your prayers for my wife and my family, in your prayers for the people of Ukraine who are suffering greatly, in your prayers for these, I want to appeal to you to add the Horn of Africa, add Ethiopia, add Yemen. We know that the American media is not interested. Why? I don't know. But we are. Whether we're black, whether we're white, whatever our nationality is, Hispanic, praise the Lord, Asian. God is blessing us to hear from people of every stripe. To God be the glory. Thank you. So I'm asking you to just add to your prayers, Ethiopia, that God in that conflict, Yemen, and wherever conflicts may break out, always when, we, when it's a human story, when it's people being killed, we got to care. And we got to pray. You may not be in a position to get a, on a plane and fly over to Ethiopia. I'm not in that position. You, but, but I tell you what, we can get on our knees and, and we can pray. As a matter of fact, I want to invite you. Now, I won't be preaching about this tonight. <laughs> the word of the Lord is going to bless you real good. I want to invite you to meet me here tonight. I got to wrap this up at the upper room, Church of God in Christ for Bible study. <laughs> yeah, we're going to study the word of the Lord together. I, regardless of what's going on in the world, I get excited even at the thought of sharing the word of the Lord and studying the word of God together. But my friends, let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, oh God, oh God, we pray for this world, this world that is filled with wars and commotions. And Jesus, you said that in the last days, that would be wars and commotions, wars and rumors of wars. And yet you said, when we see these things, you said that the end is not yet. So, Father, we pray. We pray for the people of Ukraine. We pray, oh God, that that war be ended. We pray, oh God, that you turn things. You're able to do it, and we believe you for it. But, God, we add to our prayers for those who are suffering greatly 
in Ukraine and people who have been forced by the hundreds of thousands, a million or more to leave their homes and to flee for their lives. And many of them coming under Russian gunfire or somebody shooting at them uh, and bombs being dropped even as they flee to safety. We know about them, Lord, because the media shows us them. But God, in Ethiopia, in Yemen, there are people, they, these are people also, and these also are people for whom you died. We pray that you would end the conflict, that you would bring peace. I don't know all of the political uh, ramifications. I don't know all of the details, but I know that people are dying. Women and children are being killed. Women are being raped. People are being destroyed. Arms are being chopped off. Legs are being chopped off. Wicked atrocities are taking place. War crimes are happening. Oh God. Oh God, we pray for humanity. We pray against man's uh, evil, man's ferocious uh, appetite, his ability to uh, inject pain and evil on his own fellow man. And God, we know that you're able to intervene and we thank you right now. And Father, I pray for this audience. I pray for these. I pray for these precious people. God, keep them and cause your face to shine upon them. In the name of Jesus, whatever your need may be today, I'm praying for you. God, heal. God, deliver. God, set free. Lord, intervene. Intervene right now in that woman's life, in that man's life. I feel led of the Lord. I've been saying it of late. Life is still worth living. Put that gun down. It is not over. The Lord is with thee. God is with you. The sun is going to shine. I rebuke the spirit of depression. I rebuke the spirit of fear. That heaviness, that heaviness, I, I sense it, I sense it. That heaviness there. You there who is down and out. God said, look up and live. And he's turning things on your behalf. In the name of Jesus, whether you can see it or not, rejoice even in advance, for deliverance is nigh. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen. God bless you, my friends. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. Make it a fantastic day. Glory to God.